Yes. Hello, Paul Tomasic, Thornton, Illinois. Ben Graham and the uh, model of value investing. I'd like to bring discussion back to that. And what's interesting and exceptional about you and Charlie and Ben Graham is the self-discipline, the incredible self-discipline. And if you look at the model and try to think how to present it to teach others that self-discipline, I think you have to make a little tweak to it in two areas. And that's what I'd like you to comment on. One, intrinsic value. It's always discussed that you calculate intrinsic value. But in practice, I think you find a number that is guaranteed 99% likely to be less than intrinsic value. Classic example was in 2000 when you said you'd buy shares back at 45,000. You weren't saying that Berkshire Hathaway's intrinsic value was 45,000. You were saying it was significantly more. And anyone who bought it for less than 40, 45,000 is grateful to you. The other area is the hidden assumption in the model. And that is, it's assumed that once you find a value stock and you buy it, that the intrinsic value isn't going to go down. And that's a second part of the analysis that has to be part of the discipline. So even though you found a value stock, you still haven't done all the work. You have to analyze, is the intrinsic value going to go down? In particular, companies throw away intrinsic value is the most common management, gives it away. Uh, that hasn't happened at Berkshire Hathaway, although I don't want to give an unqualified comment on that since I see you're remodeling the offices, so we don't know how much intrinsic value has been thrown away there. So if you comment on the two things, do you calculate intrinsic value or a number that's absolutely positively under intrinsic value, that's the number you put in the equation, and even when you find a stock selling for less than the, this lower bound of intrinsic value, do you still do the homework on the second part and analyze, will the intrinsic value go down in the future? Thank you. Yeah, I would feel somewhat better qualified to speak on self-discipline if I weighed about 20 pounds less, but for the moment we'll ignore that. The, uh, the, the second part of your question relating to intrinsic value going down, actually if you compute intrinsic value as reflecting the discounted value of future cash flows, that should have built into it a calculation that allows for the fact that certain businesses are going to earn less in the future than now. It isn't that their intrinsic value goes down then, because you should build it into your, into your calculation uh, right now. But, you know, as we've pointed out many times in the past, in, intrinsic value is terribly important and, 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 and very fuzzy. And we do our best to work with, in the kind of businesses where we think that we have the highest probabilities, where our, where our predictions are, are of a, high, a fairly highly probable nature. And there's, that leaves out all kinds of companies. Uh, it's pretty good, we'll say, it's something like a natural gas pipeline. I mean, it, it, the chances of big surprises will, in, a, in a pipeline should be relatively uh, small. That doesn't mean they're, they're, they're zero, but they're relatively small. Now let's assume that you had a gas, a gas pipeline, which some have, where either the supply of gas is going to run down or where there are competitive pipelines that may be trying to take away your contracts that you wrote 10 years ago and expire in two years and you're going to have to cut prices. I would say that two years from now when you have to cut prices, the intrinsic value hasn't gone down from today if you properly calculate it today and build in the fact that profit margins in the future will be lower than today. We looked at a pipeline recently where we think they are going to be vulnerable to competitive price pressures because of alternate ways of getting gas to market uh, through other pipelines. And the calculation is entirely different. Uh, the calculation is different. The results are different uh, in terms of that pipeline versus a pipeline that is the low bring gas from a, one market to another uh, and will remain the low-cost producer. But it isn't if, if properly calculated, you build in the, the uh, prediction of decline in future operating earnings. You don't wait till you get there uh, to anticipate it. Um, you know, Charlie's famous for saying that all he wants to know is where he's going to die, so he'll never go there. Well, <laughs> that's part of predicting in business. I mean, there, I love the, I'm, 
I really have never seen an investment banker's book. I, I, I hope to see one someday, and I hope I can survive the shock when I do see it, where the earnings of the business being offered go down. Lots of businesses' earnings go down, and, and they're going to go down. And I get all this nonsense, you know, where they project it out for 10 years, and it always goes up. It just isn't the real world. And you have to analyze businesses. Some businesses are going to be subjected to enormous competitive pressures that aren't extant today. And we made that mistake, for example, at Dexter Shoe. I mean, we bought a business that was earning $40 million or so pre-tax, and we assumed that the future would be as good as the past. And we, we couldn't have been more, I, I couldn't have been more wrong. So that was a case of projecting into the future conditions which were not going to exist in the future, competitive conditions. That's part of, you know, that's part of business. And I will tell you that you know, 20 percent of the Fortune 500, but I don't know which 20 percent are going to be earning, you know, significantly less money probably five years from now than they are today. And that's, that's what the game is all about, figuring out what those future cash flows are likely to be. And when you can't, when you feel you can't come up with reasonable estimates in that respect, you move on to the next one. Charlie? Yeah, we have this simple old-fashioned discipline which Warren likens to Ted Williams waiting for a fat pitch. I don't know about Warren, but if you said to me, Charlie, you can go into the business of managing money the way other people do, or you're measured against indexes and you've got consultant choosing consultants that are reviewing you to committees, I would just hate it. I would regard it as being put into shackles and and shackles where the very system was preventing me from delivering value. Warren, how would you feel about that? Yeah, we wouldn't. Sure. We, we, we wouldn't do it. We never did do it, as a matter of fact. And one of you know the the uh, initial when we formed the partnership on May fifth, nineteen fifty six, I, I passed out to the seven limited partners of something called the ground rules, and I you know I said here's what I can do and here's what I can't do. And there's some things I don't know whether I can do or not, maybe. It was, it was fairly short. But the idea of setting out to do something that you know you can't do, that can't be, you know, that's got to lead to problems. I mean, somebody tells me I have to high jump seven feet, and we can even move that down to four feet now. You know, between now and sundown, or I'll be shot, you know, I will go out and buy a bulletproof vest. And <laughs> yeah, the, the, the general system for money management requires people to pretend that they can do something that they can't do and to pretend to like it when they really don't. And I think that's a terrible way to spend your life, but it's very well paid.